so far uh, we have already covered uh, the section on Anapanasati and on the area pata, uh, the postures of the body. Okay. <clears throat> so next, under Kaya Nupasana, uh, the Buddha talk about uh, Sampajana. Uh, so the Sampajana Baba, the section on clear comprehension. Okay. Mm. So in this section, the Buddha says, Punachaparam bhikkhu bhikkhu abhikanti patikanti sambhajana kari hoti alokite vilokite sambhajana kari hoti samajite pasarite sambhajana kari hoti sangati bhatta chivaradharane sambhajana kari hoti Asite pite kayite sayite sampajana kari hoti Uchara pasawa kame sampajana kari hoti Gate tite nisine sute jagarite Basite tunhi bhave sampajana kari hoti Okay So, so that is the instruction in Pali huh? So uh, so, Panachaparam mm, Bikawe. Uh, so, and again, Bikus. Okay, so, uh, so this means is introducing another uh, way of do, practicing Kayanupasana. Uh, so, Panachaparam uh, Bikawe. And again, okay, so, mm, Biku. Uh, uh, Bhikkhu means uh, the bhikkhu, the monks or the yogi. Eh? So, bhikkhu, abhikante, patikante, sambhajana, karihoti. Eh? So, in going forward and in returning, uh, he, he is one who practices or applies clear comprehension. So he applies or practices clear comprehension uh, in the act of going forward and returning. Then alokite, vilokite, sampajana, karihoti. So in looking ahead or looking sideways, uh, he, he is one who practices uh, or applies clear comprehension. Okay. Hmm. Huh? So, do you apply when you look ahead <laughs> and when you look up? And samanjite pasarite sambhajana karihoti. So, in bending or in stretching, uh, that means the limbs, the body. Huh? So, he is one who applies or practices clear comprehension. Sangati pata jiva radharane sampajana karihoti. So, in the carrying the sangati, so here the Buddha is giving example of a monk. So, a monk, when we go about, we carry our sangati. Sangati uh, means the outer rope. Uh, so, uh, so the monks have three ropes, right? So there's one, the <coughs> antarawasaka, uh, the, that means the inner rope, uh, or more popularly known as the lower rope. Uh, so that is the sarong. You wear around the waist, you tie it around the waist. Okay. Then there is the Uttara Sangha. Okay. Yes, this is the Uttara Sangha. Uh, this is the upper rope. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Then the third one is the Sangati. Uh, Sangati, we call it the outer rope. Uh, so it's a 
very thick and heavy rope. It's actually double layered. Okay? So you usually use it uh, as a blanket or to cover uh, when it's cold. Uh, so in the morning when we have group meditation here, uh, you see me covered in an extra piece of rope. Right? Uh, that is a sangati. Okay? Mm, so that is to protect from cold. <clears throat> so usually sangati we don't wear. Usually. <laughs> Instead, instead, we carry it around. Some monks just put it over their shoulder. That is a sangati. So in carrying the sangati, and and pata, pata is a bow, arms bow. Okay? So, so when monks travel around, or we, when we go for arms round, we we carry the arms bow in front. Yeah. Uh, usually when we are traveling, not on, on arms round, we, we put the arms bow in a bag, a bowl bag, and then we sling it over the shoulder. Uh, that is also called carrying uh, the bowl. So in carrying the sangati, the outer rope, and the bowl, and then chivara also means ropes. Uh, so since sangati already mentions, therefore chivara will refer to the, the other two ropes. Uh, or any other ropes that the monks have, uh, any other extra ropes. Okay. Mm. So the other two ropes, uh, we don't carry around, we wear them. <laughs> if, if we carry around, then we will be going about naked. <laughs> uh, so we wear them. Okay. So the word dharani uh, can mean carrying or wearing. Okay. So one Pali word covers both meaning. So, so the Buddha only used the word dharani. He don't have to use more than he don't have to use another word. <laughs> so this one word dharani means carrying or wearing. So in carrying, you can say in carrying the sangati and the bow, and in wearing the other ropes, the other two ropes. He is one who. Uh, practices or applies clear comprehension. So for the lay people, uh, lay yogis, you apply according to your situation. Uh, when you are putting on uh, your shirt uh, and so on, uh, so you apply clear comprehension. Uh, or when you're carrying your things around, uh, uh, when you come to this meditation hall, uh, so you carry, uh, what do you carry? <laughs> or your water bottle, or your meditation cushion, and what else, I don't know. <laughs> so in carrying those around, you apply clear comprehension. Then, asite pite kayite sayite sambajana karihoti. So eating, in eating, in drinking, in chewing, in savoring, uh, you apply a practice clear comprehension. Okay? Uh, so this is where you get your eating meditation. Uh, so, so when you're eating, when you're biting, when you're chewing the food, uh, when you're drinking your drinks, uh, or when you are savoring. Savoring actually means licking. Uh, some food you lick, right? Like honey. Uh, when you take honey, uh, uh, you, you, put it, you take a, one scoop from the spoon, and then slowly you savor, you lick bit by bit, right? <laughs> or sweets. Uh, uh, so, or ice cream. Uh, 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 mm, yeah. I think you should say licking. Savoring seems to give the impression you enjoy. <laughs> you savor. Uh, so, <clears throat> um, so you apply clear comprehension uh, when eating. And then, Ucara Pasawa Kame Sambajana Karihoti. 
So yeah, this literally means in uh, defecating and in urinating. Uh, you apply clear comprehension. Yeah, so here some translator uh, prefer to translate as in answering calls of nature, <laughs> you apply clear comprehension. Uh, but literally, the Buddha literally says uh, in defecating and in urinating. Uh, so ujjara actually means uh, faces. Basawa means the urine. So kame, kama, the work. <laughs> that means the work of expelling uh, feces and urine. So that means defecating, urinating. Yeah. So, mm, say the Dhamma, when teaching the Dhamma, the Buddha do not shy away from using all this uh, description uh, that describe the ugly nature of the body. Uh, so, we may try to hide away uh, from them and uh, say, answer call of nature. <laughs> uh, yeah, but Buddha straight away say, in defecating, urinating. Uh, so, because mm. in the teaching of the Dhamma, the Buddha wants us to face reality instead of run away from reality. Uh, so later in the section, the last section of Kaya Nupasana, I talk about the different kinds of cops. Uh, bloated, uh, uh, festering, uh, wormy corpse. <laughs> uh, uh, so it described to you all the different type of corpse, corpses. Uh, mm. uh, parts of the body. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, <clears throat> okay, so, uh, so. So even when you go to the toilet also, uh, <laughs> you must meditate. Okay? So meditation does not end at the, you do not leave your meditation outside the door of the toilet. You bring it with you inside and you bring it out together. Okay, So meditation is not some an activity that you only carry out in a sacred place, <laughs> in a holy place. So even in a toilet also, you must meditate. And then gate tite nisine sute jagarite basite tunhi bhave sambhajana karihoti. So in going, in walking, in standing, in sitting down, in falling asleep, in waking up, in speaking, and in keeping silence. He is one who practices or applies clear comprehension. So here, uh, the Buddha is instructing us to apply or practice clear comprehension. Okay, sampajana. Okay, so, so the word that is used here is sampajana. Actually, sampajana uh, means uh, one who has this quality of sampajanya. Uh, sampajanya is clear comprehension. Mm -hmm. So one who has this quality of sampajanya is called sampajana. Mm -hmm. Now we have already explained the meaning of sampajanya, clear comprehension uh, earlier. Remember? <laughs> So it is uh, one of the quality uh, mental states uh, that must accompany every moment of noting. Uh, when you practice satipatthana, every moment when you note, uh, there must be this quality of clear comprehension. That's the instruction of the Buddha. Uh, when you practice, there must be these three qualities, ata, pisam, pajano, satima. And so you must have this ardent energetic effort. Uh, you must have this quality of clear comprehension and mindfulness. Uh, remember? <clears throat> yeah. So we have we have explained before the uh, meaning of sampajanya, clear comprehension. Uh, but just to refresh your mind, uh, 
uh, because many people also forget. Uh, that's why when I receive question, uh, <laughs> question that asks about things that I've already explained many times. Uh, so to refresh your memory. Okay. Mm. So sampajanya uh, is a word that is synonymous with panya, uh, wisdom. Mm. So wisdom, as we explained, is derived from the root nia. Uh, nia means uh, to know uh, or knowing. Okay. So, mm. So the basic root word uh, for panya is near, uh, knowing. Okay. Mm. So therefore, this means that basically, uh, panya uh, means knowing. Okay. It's a kind of knowing. Okay. Wisdom is actually a mode of knowing, uh, a way of knowing. Okay. So, mm, so it's. So wisdom is actually simply knowing, okay? Mm. So there's no thinking, no analyzing, pondering, huh? no exercise or intellect, simply knowing, okay? So, mm. yeah. so when we develop wisdom, huh? so that means uh, you don't exercise your intellect. <laughs> Uh, when we say this person has wisdom, uh, it doesn't mean that he, he is very, he has good intellectual knowledge. Uh, so it's just simply a way of knowing. Okay? Mm. But not just any kind of knowing. Okay? So uh, not uh, knowing that is superficial on the surface. Mm. So Mm. as denoted by the prefix. Uh, there's the uh, pa. Uh, so you add the prefix pa to nya. Uh, so you get panya. Uh, so, mm. so this prefix pa uh, is an intensifier. Uh, it's an intensifier prefix. So, and so it intensify it. It alters the meaning of near by intensifying it. Uh, so therefore, it's not just an ordinary kind of knowing. It's an intensified kind of knowing, a deep, uh, penetrative knowing. Knowing things clearly, distinctly, uh, precisely, exactly as they are. Okay? Mm. That is wisdom. Okay? Mm. Mm -hmm. And this is what we develop uh, in Vipassana meditation, Panya. Okay? Mm. So therefore, uh, when you develop, uh, in, you do not apply the intellect. Uh, you do not think, analyze, ponder over your experience. Okay? You simply know. Uh, so, but no clearly, no distinctly. That's why in a practice, uh, you need to develop uh, power of sati and samadhi, okay? mindfulness and uh, concentration. You must have this very focused attention uh, on the object. Then only the knowing uh, will be penetrative. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So you have to apply uh, the mind in a focused way again and again. You apply, apply, apply. Uh, as you apply uh, the mind, the power of mindfulness and concentration develops. Uh, the, the power of the focus attention uh, becomes more and more developed. As it becomes more and more developed, uh, the mind becomes clearer and clearer. And cl the knowing uh, becomes clearer and clearer and clearer. Uh, so when it becomes clearer and clearer, uh, you begin to discern clearly uh, and precisely. Uh, 
the true nature of the object, of the mental physical phenomena that has been contemplated. That is wisdom, that is jnana or panya. So you have panya, okay, and then you add another prefix, sam. So it becomes sampanya. Right? So sampanya, and then through some grammatical transformation, basically you double up the, the root word. So sampanya, you double up the nya. So sampanya nya, <laughs> then becomes sampajanya. Okay? So, so when you add this prefix sam, it alters further the meaning. So you already got the meaning panya. You know clearly, distinctly. So precisely and so on. Then, then you add some the prefix some. So it alters the meaning further. You still have this meaning of panya. It still knows clearly, knows distinctly. Precisely, mm. but uh, with additional feature, <laughs> you can say. Yeah? So, mm. so the in the commentary they explain the uh, meaning of the prefix sam uh, in three ways: okay? sama pajananto, samantato pajananto, samam pajananto. Mm -hmm. So uh, the first one, sama pajananto, sama, huh? no, it means rightly or correctly, right? Mm. Sama, like sama diti, sama sangkapa, sama, huh? so rightly or correctly. Uh, so sama pajananto to know correctly or knowing correctly. Okay. Mm. So. How do you know correctly? How does the yogi knows correctly? So that means the yogi notes, make effort to note in such a way that the noting is so precise that every moment he notes, he can distinguish clearly in the experience. Uh, each individual mental and physical nature is present in the experience uh, noted. Okay, so without mixing up all this different nature. Okay? So, for example, when you're noting uh, rising, uh, so you're not rising, uh, you may you may experience, for example, pushing. Huh? So, and you know, yeah, you know, oh, pushing is one nature. Okay. Mm. Then what else is there? Uh, yeah, you know, again, push, pushing, pushing, pushing. Then you may realize, oh, there's a knowing of the pushing. Uh, uh, then you you realize this pushing. I mean, this knowing of the pushing is another nature, separate from the pushing. So they are not mixed up together. Okay. So because of the clear knowledge, uh, you can of the due to the precision of noting and the clarity uh, of the mind, they are able to tell apart these two different nature. Uh, they don't get mixed up. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you may realize, oh, uh, the, the body is sensitive. There's a sensitivity, yeah. Yeah, so you can pick up uh, the the sensation of pushing. Uh, so this nature of sensitivity is another nature. Yeah. So uh, sometimes you may feel uh, the mind every moment is contacting the object, contacting the object, touching the object. That is another nature. That is pasa. Uh, mm. Sometimes you may uh, experience a feeling. Uh, 
uh, of the experience pleasant, unpleasant, uh, or neutral. Uh, so uh, the mind is clear enough to distinguish uh, all this different nature. Uh, so you are not mixed up together. If you are not clear, everything is mixed up together. Right? Uh, and then it's all mixed up together. We say the compactness, remember? Things become compact. Uh, then you identify this compactness as a person. Uh, uh, so uh, I am observing rising. Uh, I, uh, I'm so good in observing rising. Uh, so uh, this is my rising. This is my abdomen rising. Uh, so we identify uh, the eye uh, or something belonging to an eye. Okay? Mm. So, uh, so when you identify, you do not see clearly, that's called uh, uh, mecha pajananto, okay? knowing wrongly. Uh, but when you're knowing correctly, uh, then your knowing is so clear uh, that every moment you know. Uh, you can pick up uh, individual uh, mental, physical nature. Uh, so, of course, one noting you pick up one nature. It's not that one noting you pick up uh, all the different nature. Okay? So, the mind can only know one thing at a time. Okay? So, you note rising, 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 rising again and again. Uh, and as you note continuously, uh, you pick up one nature after another. And you see clearly uh, that the experience composed of all this different nature. Uh, they are not mixed up together. Uh, you yeah. clear uh, that there is no person here. There is only nature, only Dhamma. Uh, only Dharma Rupa Dhamma, mental, physical nature. Okay? Mm. So this is called Sama Pajananto, knowing correctly. Mm. So when you when the yogi is said to practice clear comprehension or to apply clear comprehension, this is uh, how the yogi knows. Yeah. And this knowing uh, is simply knowing. Yeah. It doesn't arise through thinking. It's not that you're thinking about all this different nature. Uh, you're simply observing, observing, observing. Uh, and as your mind continuously observes, it becomes clearer and clearer, and then you begin to discern the nature that is present, okay? mm, without thinking. Uh, so mm, that's called Sama Pajananto, uh, knowing correctly. And then Samantato Pajananto, uh, the second meaning of the prefix Sam. Uh, so Samantato Pajananto means to know completely or thoroughly, uh, to know in all ways, all around knowing. Okay. So, this means to know the, whatever object that you know, uh, you know it in uh, all its different aspect, different manner, different nature. So this uh, refers to uh, knowing the object in terms of the three different nature, uh, sabbhava, sankata, samanya. Uh, so knowing it in terms of the sabbhava lakana is unique characteristic, unique nature. Okay? Mm, so uh, hardness, softness, stiffness, tightness, heat, cold, knowing, feeling, perceiving and so on okay? unique nature of each mental or physical object okay? and then the sabbhava lakana and then from there uh, you contemplate the sankata lakana conditioned nature uh, of arising and disappearing okay? so uh, you know the sabbhava first so for example you know stiffness and then you notice the stiffness it arises, it disappears. Huh? So, the stiffness is sabbhava, lakana, the unique nature of the wind element. And when you discern it arising and disappearing, that is sankata lakana, the conditioned nature of arising and disappearing. Okay? Mm. 
saya not again and again arising disappearing arising disappearing arising disappearing uh, gradually begin to descend sama ni lah kan the common or universal characteristic uh, impermanent suffering and non so okay. hmm. so noting and knowing the object in terms of it, this tree uh, sabawa sangkata and sama ni lah kan uh, it is called knowing uh, thoroughly completely eh samantato pajananto eh knowing uh, the object in all its aspect eh? in all manner eh? so knowing it completely thoroughly eh? mm. because if you just know sabbawa you only know one aspect of its nature it's not complete yet. Okay. Mm. If you know sabbawa and sankata, it's still not complete. Uh, it's only when you uh, know all three, uh, sabbawa, sankata, and samanya, uh, then only uh, is complete knowing of the object. You know it completely. So this goes back to what the Buddha said about the first noble truth. Uh, so it's first noble truth. Dukkam Arya Satcham Parineyam. So the first noble truth of suffering should be fully understood. Parineyam. Fully understood means and to know it completely, thoroughly in this way. Sabhava, Sankata, Samanya. That's why we pass on our meditation. Yeah, we are actually contemplating on the first noble truth noting our object is actually the first noble truth nama rupa the first noble truth five aggregates is the first noble truth okay to discern clearly the five aggregates in terms of sabbhava lakana sankata lakana and samanya lakana that is parineyam okay so to fully understand uh, the truth of suffering. Okay? Mm. This is clear comprehension. Okay? Mm. And the last meaning is Samam Pajananto. Uh, this is more, uh, this explanation is more of an encouragement uh, to the yogi in the sense that what it means is that uh, it must. Uh, develop this clear comprehension by oneself. Yeah? So Sama means by oneself. Yeah? So that means we must make personal effort. Uh, in our practice, we must make personal effort uh, to develop clear comprehension. Yeah? Because nobody is going to help you develop this clear comprehension. Uh, not even the Buddha. Uh, uh, you can go in front of the Buddha image, uh, you put your hand together, pai, 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 pai. Uh, <laughs> please give me knowledge. <laughs> uh, Buddha already parinibbana, <laughs> so I cannot hear your pleading. Uh, yeah, the image of the Buddha is just a symbolic representation of the Buddha. Uh, it's not that the Buddha is there. <laughs> So, so uh, and the Buddha, even when he's still around, uh, he already told everybody, you yourself must walk the path. Uh, uh, so the Buddha only pointed away. Uh, so, so by oneself, we uh, must make this personal effort to develop clear comprehension. Uh, you must develop it continuously uh, so that the insight uh, is continuously uh, and progressively developed uh, so that uh, it reach continuously, uh, reach deeper and deeper, uh, uh, clearer and clearer, uh, uh, becomes more and more mature. Uh, it's able to reach a higher and higher distinction of knowledge until uh, you attain Maga Palanyana. 
Now that's actually, an, I read also another explanation. Uh, uh, summer, Pajananto. Uh, Here it takes summer meaning evenly. Okay, so evenly means this is actually more of a hint how you can develop clear comprehension, uh, clear knowledge. Uh, evenly means you need to balance the mind, balance the controlling faculties. Uh, and means wisdom must be balanced with faith. Uh, energy must be balanced with concentration. Okay, so when the mind is well balanced with mindfulness, uh, then it becomes sharp and penetrative. And then it can discern clearly. Okay? Mm. So, mm -hmm. so that is another meaning. Uh, so, so, but basically, uh, so sampajanya, clear comprehension means clear insight. A clear insight into nature of nama rupa, uh, mental physical nature, as they appear arise in our experience. <coughs> yeah. mm. So, in terms of the practice, uh, sampajanya means clear insight into n n mental physical nature that arise <coughs> in our experience. <coughs> So when the Buddha says uh, he applies or practices <coughs> clear comprehension, uh, so this means the yogi must make effort <coughs> uh, to discern clearly nature of nama rupa, uh, make effort uh, so that each moment when you're noting, uh, make sure that uh, noting is always with clear comprehension. Uh, there's no one moment of experience that is separate from clear comprehension. Okay. Mm. Okay. So previously also we also discussed about the four kinds of clear comprehension. Huh? You remember? <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't remember. Then we have to refresh. <laughs> So, four kinds of clear comprehension. Uh, sataka, sampajanya, clear comprehension uh, of what is beneficial. Uh, sapaya, sampajanya, uh, clear comprehension of suitability. Yeah? Then, uh, gochara, sampajanya, uh, clear comprehension of domain. Yeah? And asamoha, sampajanya, uh, clear comprehension of non delusion. So, remember? <laughs> mm. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so, just to refresh your memory again. Mm. So, mm. so, the first one, Sataka Sampajani, mm. their comprehension of what is beneficial. So, so this means uh, considering clearly in your mind. Mm. So, before uh, you do anything, before you go anywhere, you do anything, you, you use anything, you consider clearly in your mind, with a clear mind. Huh? Yeah. So you consider, huh? is it beneficial or not? Huh? So beneficial here means beneficial for the practice, huh? beneficial uh, for the growth in the Dhamma. Okay? So you consider. And you only do it huh, if it is beneficial. If it is not beneficial, you restrain yourself huh, from doing. <coughs> yeah. So example given in the commentary. Huh, it says, going to visit a shrine. Uh, chetia. Huh, uh, a shrine uh, that enshrines the relic of the Buddha or a Buddha image. Huh? So, or going to visit a body tree. Huh? So, uh, so he says this, uh, this is beneficial. Huh? Uh, why is it beneficial? Uh, because when a yogi visits 
uh, such a place, uh, a shrine that enshrines the Buddha image or a relic of the Buddha, or sometimes even uh, some utensils uh, that the Buddha has used during his lifetime. Uh, so, for example, his robes or his uh, bowl, uh, the staff, and so on. Uh, that Buddha has used. Uh, so, so when you go to pay respect, uh, pay homage, worship uh, in such a place uh, or to a body tree, uh, so your attention is on the Buddha. Your reminder of the Buddha in your mind. Uh, uh, you you remember the Buddha. Uh, so. Um, uh, you can even you may even recollect the qualities of the Buddha. Itipiso, uh, Bhagawa, Araham, Samasam, Buddha, and so on. Right. Mm. So, and this is beneficial uh, because to a uh, to one who is faithful has a lot of faith, especially. Uh, so when the attention is on the Buddha, and when he's recollecting the qualities of the Buddha. It can give rise to uh, pity, a lot of joy. Huh? So, and then it says that by contemplating the disappearance of the joy, uh, uh, you thought he's going to say you can enjoy the pity, right? <laughs> but the commentary says by contemplating the disappearance or the destruction of the joy. That means you do vipassana on the joy. You see it disappearing and you see its nature of impermanent suffering and non-self. Uh, then you can develop insight and then you can even attain arahanship. Huh? So, hmm. yeah, there are many examples like this uh, in the commentary yeah, where a monk uh, or he's meditating, a PT arises. Yeah? So not just by contemplating on the virtues of the Buddha, qualities of the Buddha. Yeah? So uh, some monks, they, they contemplate the sila, the purity of the sila. Yeah? So they found that oh, since uh, the day I was ordained, I've kept my sila pure. Uh, until now. Uh, so when they reflect on this, it gives rise to a lot of pity. Uh, uh, joy arises. And then they contemplate on the nature of the joy. Uh, and then they develop insight. Uh, they see the joy arises and disappear. Uh, they see the nature of impermanent suffering and non -self. And they attain arahanship. Uh, it's a wonderful way of practice, right? Rather than, yeah, you all contemplate the pain, they contemplate joy. And then another example is this, uh, visiting the Sangha. Uh, it's also beneficial. Uh, so when you visit the Sangha, uh, you can do dana, uh, you can share merits. Uh, so in this way, you obtain merits uh, to support your practice. Uh, it's idame punyam, idame dana. Nibbana sa pachaya hotu. So you direct the power of the merits uh, to support your practice. Uh, it is beneficial for the practice. Okay? Mm, so that's why whenever you do dana, uh, you must always uh, make this aspiration. Uh, then only uh, is directed to, to support your practice. Okay? Uh, not only when you do dana. Uh, so when you do any kusala kama, eh, when you observe precepts, you take refuge, go for refuge, observe precepts, when you meditate, eh, vipassana or metta or anapana, whatever meditation, after you meditate, your mind is pure. That is kusala. Eh, that is merits. Okay? Uh, so, so you make aspiration. Uh, that's why in a retreat, uh, end of the day, you make aspiration. Uh, so, mm. this is beneficial for the practice. Mm. So, 
and also uh, again for those who who are faithful who has a lot of faith uh, when they see the monks uh, and sometimes just seeing for some people just seeing the ropes and sometimes the monk washes the rope and then hang out to try to see the ropes ah he says the banner of the arahans <laughs> so a joy arise uh, it's not that the monk is the arahan uh, that the you, do you all know the ropes is called the uh, arahata ketu uh, the banner of the arahans the flag of the arahans uh, that is the arahans flag <laughs> yeah and soldiers go to war uh, they charge into the battlefield they carry the flag right uh, so for arahans this is the flag <laughs> the ropes. Uh, that's why you must be very careful when we wear the ropes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you are like the soldier uh, charging into battle with Mara, holding <laughs> the, the banner of the Arahans. <laughs> see? Mm. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, when they see this, uh, faith may arise. You see? Uh, again, uh, <laughs> When the faith arises, the pity arises also. Huh? And then you contemplate the pity. You see, it's impermanent nature. Huh? Uh, it arises only to disappear. So what good is it <laughs> when it doesn't last? Right? It's suffering. <laughs> huh? It arises and disappears, suffering. It's impermanent, it's suffering, it's non-self. You cannot control. Huh? You cannot say, I want this joy to last forever and ever. You can wish all you want. <laughs> it will not last. So it disappears. You develop this insight. And then the insight mature, you can even attain arahanship. <clears throat> and then also visiting a Tera. A Tera here would mean a learned teacher. So an elder, a Tera. Okay? So who is well versed in the Dhamma. So you visit him to listen to the Dhamma. Yeah. Don't just go and visit a monk to look at him like that. <laughs> so, so visit in order to learn the Dhamma, listen to the Dhamma. So when you listen to the Dhamma, you can learn the Dhamma, you can be inspired by the Dhamma, and then you can be established in the practice of the Dhamma, leading to the attainment of Arahanship. And so this is also beneficial. Okay. Mm. And then uh, by contemplating, uh, you say Asuba. Uh, asuba means something that is ugly. Uh, uh, so this refers to a corpse. Okay. Mm. So when you go funeral and you look at the cops, uh, it says uh, this is beneficial. Then you get the opportunity to meditate on the lovesomeness, ugly nature of the body. Yeah, mm. yeah. this goes against the <laughs> Chinese belief. Huh? <laughs> Chinese belief is uh, as much as possible, they try to avoid going to funeral. Uh, and if they have no choice, they have to go, they try to avoid looking at the cops. <laughs> uh, uh, I remember uh, when I was very young, uh, uh, I remember my cousin told me, uh, so at that time, I think some close friend of the family passed away, so they all have to go and attend the funeral. So when you attend the funeral, they invite you to go and look at a dead person uh, in the in the in the casket, right? So you know, my cousin, he grew up in a Chinese family, uh, a lot of superstition, <laughs> and looking at a corpse is bad luck. <laughs> so he says, oh, when I, I have no choice, but I have to go and look. So he says, when when I look at it, I close my eyes, and then I, you know, when you look down, you look like this, and he say, but I was closing my eyes. <laughs> So he pretend to look at him while he was closing his eyes. Mm. Mm. So, mm. 
But in terms of the Dhamma, looking at the cops is something beneficial. Huh? So you get this opportunity to meditate, huh? to discern clearly the nature, the loathsome nature, ugly nature huh? of the cops. Because huh? this is the nature of your own body also. Huh? Hmm. But nowadays it's very difficult. You look at the cops in the casket, they dress it up so nicely, put makeup, uh, put lipstick. <laughs> so sometimes it looks better than when they were alive. <laughs> so mm. so I, I think I told you all before, right? last year when Venerable Mahachara pass away. Yeah? So before he passed away, he already instructed yeah? not to embalm his body. Yeah? Just, just leave it there. Okay? Mm. But because there was a three days wake, yeah? so they have to put the, the dry ice <laughs> inside the casket. Yeah? So but still, after the second day, you can see, start to see yeah, the body starts to turn a little dark and a little bloated. Yeah? So, uh, so the true nature appears. That's the nature of the body. If you leave it longer there, uh, then it will be worse. Yeah? So for Mahachara's case, they already stuffed his nose with cotton. Yeah? So I think the mouth also, they probably already stitched it up. Uh, and the ears also, they stuff it with cotton. Uh, if they have not done that, you see how the fluid starts to flow out. Uh, from the nose, from the ears, and from the mouth also. Uh, you leave it long enough, you, know, you see worms starting to crawl out. <laughs> uh, so that's the nature of our body. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So imagine, uh, or you can try, uh, don't take care of the body for one week. Uh, don't, don't clean it, don't bathe, don't brush your teeth. Uh, so don't comb your hair. Uh, uh, don't take care of it. Don't even eat. Uh, don't eat. Don't drink. Uh, don't drink. I think after one or two days you die already. Uh, so because the body will become so toxic. Huh? Uh, so, uh, so, you see, you don't bathe, you start to be sting. <laughs> uh, nobody wants to go near you. Huh? So, uh, yeah, yes, that's the nature of our body. That's how you reflect. Huh? So, uh, so when you reflect on the loathsome nature, ugly nature of the body, uh, you can even, if you have this uh, disposition uh, of the mind, of propensity of the mind towards samadhi, uh, you can even establish in the first jhana. Uh, yes, and this meditation subject can bring about the first jhana. Okay, uh, and then... What do you do with first jhana? <laughs> you enjoy? <laughs> no, you withdraw from it. <laughs> and then you contemplate its nature of impermanent suffering and non-self. Huh? Uh, and then you can arrive at arahanshi. You see? Uh, so next time you go to funeral, remember this. Huh? You have this opportunity. It's not bad luck. Huh? No. But just because an action uh, is beneficial, uh, we should not immediately do it. Uh, uh, so that's where the second clear comprehension, uh, sapaya sampajanya, clear comprehension of suitability. It is beneficial, but you must further consider whether it is suitable or not for that time, uh, for that situation. Is it suitable or not? Okay. So, for example, it says yeah, visiting a shrine, body tree, uh, may be beneficial. Uh, but if at that time uh, there is a festival going on with a lot of people, uh, so like in Burma, uh, 
There's this pagoda festival. It can be very, very noisy. A lot of people. Sometimes fun fair. And then we loud chanting through all these big speakers. You know, you can hear, hear the chanting from a mile away. So, so there's a lot of activities going on. So there's a lot of distraction present, pulling your attention away from your meditation. So that if you are yogi, you want to meditate in such a place, your mind simply cannot settle down. Very difficult to settle down. So you cannot meditate on the virtues of the Buddha. Okay? Joy cannot arise. <laughs> so, so at that time, it is not suitable. So you want to meditate, better find another shrine, another pagoda or body tree that is more quiet. So, so it says visiting a terra, to listen to the Dhamma is beneficial. So, but sometimes this Dhamma talk may be held as part of the big festival with a lot of merrymaking. So, so in such a time, the Dhamma talk is also usually not related to meditation. Usually talk to lay people in general, uh, talk about doing dana, observing sila. Uh, so you touch very, very little on meditation. Okay? So, mm, yeah, so such talks are not suitable for yogis. Uh, and also because of this festive environment, uh, it's also not suitable for a yogi to be there. Uh, mm. That's why it's not suitable to hold uh, celebration in a meditation center. Uh, so, but of course, sometimes it cannot be held like a Katina day, uh, Vesa day. Sometimes people come. Okay? So, uh, so if you know at, at that time there's uh, such celebration in that center, then you go to another center to meditate. Uh, so. Yeah. So even the Dhamma talk at that time is not suitable <laughs> for a yogi. Uh, so yogi should be attending Dhamma talks where there are also other yogis around. Uh, so like in a retreat like this. Uh, so you, uh, so all the yogis are around. Uh, so those at home also are those yogis who are interested in the practice. Uh, so. So in such a setting, uh, the Dhamma talk that is given uh, is concerning meditation. Okay? So topics related to meditation. Okay? So topics like uh, the four satipatthana, uh, so the fourfold right exertion, uh, chattara samapadana, uh, uh, then the, the four idipadas, uh, basis of success, uh, the five indriyas, uh, controlling faculties, the five powers, uh, panchabala, uh, the seven factors of enlightenment, the noble eightfold path. Uh, so also uh, touch on topics like the five aggregates, nature of the five aggregates, the six sense bases, the 18 elements, dependent origination, four noble truths. Uh, these are all talks that are suitable for a yogi. Talk about letting go, eh? talk about relinquishing, about contentment, and so on. Eh? So these are talks that are suitable eh? for a yogi. Okay. Mm. Mm. Uh, not talks that are for entertainment. Uh, sometimes, nowadays especially, many people go attend Dhamma talk as a kind of entertainment. Uh, so the Dhamma speaker needs to be, come prepared with a lot of interesting story <coughs> uh, to entertain the audience. Uh, 
So, <clears throat> but still, uh, it's beneficial if you learn something from the story. Okay, mm. but um, <clears throat> actually, for talks on meditation, especially talks directed to a yogi, uh, actually, it is not suitable to <laughs> tell jokes. <laughs> So, although sometimes we do tell jokes or so, so, but you see, meditation teachers, real meditation teachers, really serious ones, like Mahasi Siado, like Siado Pandita, Siado Kundala, I never hear them telling jokes in their Dhamma talk. Very serious. He said, Sayada Pandita, when he gives talk, he never looked up. He always looked down. So, and very serious. He sit there without moving. So, because you're not supposed to excite the yogi. <laughs> you tell jokes that you excite the yogi. So, <clears throat> Yeah, but sometimes because our Malaysian yogis are too stiff and uptight, yeah, because too much effort, yeah? because we are we are we grow up that way, right? Uh, I be, uh, <laughs> so we are too serious in our practice. I must get it. I must get it. Uh, so sometimes the teacher has to loosen you up a bit. Uh, uh, yeah, last time I remember I attend uh, Bhante Sujiva's retreat. When this yogi was so serious, when he, she listens to Dhamma talk, stiff like that, so serious the face. <laughs> and then Bhante Sujiva cracked one joke and then the whole face changes and the body starts to shake <laughs> with laughter. Uh, they loosen you up. <laughs> mm. So it depends what, what is suitable at that time. Huh? <laughs> so, and meditation on cops uh, may be beneficial, uh, but if the cops is uh, body of uh, opposite gender, uh, then it's not suitable, uh, because loss may arise, which can be a danger uh, to meditation. So that is not suitable. Okay. Hmm. Yes. So uh, for a yogi, uh, before doing anything, going anywhere, using anything, uh, yogi, uh, especially in a retreat, you must consider uh, whether it's beneficial or not, whether it's suitable or not uh, for the practice, for the growth in the Dhamma. Okay? And only if it's beneficial and suitable, uh, then you do it. Okay? Otherwise, yeah, you refrain from doing it. <clears throat> Like talking, is it beneficial? Yeah. Most of the time, it's not beneficial. Right? Yeah. But during an interview, uh, it's beneficial. Yeah. But only if it is suitable speech. <laughs> that means you talk about your practice. Yeah. Don't stray to other topics. So, mm, so beneficial and, and suitable. Okay, so, and then, yeah. So, sataka sampajanya, sapaya sampajanya. Uh, clear comprehension of what is beneficial and what is suitable. Okay. And these two sampajanya, clear comprehension, are also applicable, not just in a retreat, but also outside of a retreat. Okay. So, if yogis were to apply these two clear comprehension outside a retreat, uh, you, you find you can help, it can help to simplify your life as a yogi. Uh, so you keep asking everything that you do, is it beneficial for a practice? Is it suitable for a practice? Then you find that you will stop doing a lot of things. <laughs> uh, because you find a lot of things are actually not beneficial, not suitable for the practice. Uh, so that's why uh, a lot of yogis say that they don't watch TV anymore. <laughs> huh? Newspaper also, they read only a little bit just uh, to uh, have some information of what's going on only. 
uh, because it, as a lay person, you cannot totally uh, be ignorant of what's going on in a society. Right? So, but they just reach enough to know what's going on. Uh, so, and uh, they also start to try to avoid as much as possible uh, social gathering. <laughs> But as a lay person, of course, you cannot totally avoid. Uh, your friend invite you out to go makan. Uh, you can avoid one time, two time. Third time you avoid, uh, and then they, they say, what is wrong with this person? <laughs> uh, uh, so you cannot totally avoid. Uh, so also, you have an obligation also uh, to uh, people around you, your families, uh, your friends, and so on. Okay. Mm. But uh, if you apply this to clear comprehension, uh, as much as possible, you try to avoid. <laughs> uh, uh, so to protect your practice, you see. <laughs> uh, mm. So you do not become too distracted uh, by worldly concerns. Uh, uh, so you do not stray too far away from the path of the Dhamma practice. Okay. Mm. okay. So we'll talk about the other two clear comprehension eh, in the next stop and stop here today imaya dhamma nu dhamma pati pati ya buddham pujemi imaya dhamma nu dhamma pati pati ya dhammam pujemi Imaya Dhamma Nu Dhamma Pati Pati Ya Sangham Pujemi <coughs> Imaya Dhamma Nu Dhamma Pati Pati Ya Mata Bitunam Pujemi Imaya Dhamma nu dhamma pati pati ya ajariya nam pujemi adha imaya pati padaya charam ranam ha rimo chesami idame punyam Asawa kaya waham hodu idame punyam nibbanasa pachayo hodu idame silam magabhala nyanasa pachayo hodu imam no Punya bhagam sabasatanam dema imam no punya bhagam sabasatanam dema imam no punya bhagam sabasatanam dema sadu Sadhu, Sadhu. And so may all of you be well, happy, and peaceful always. May you all be safe, be healthy, be strong. May you all be able to practice the Dhamma continuously without any obstacle, without any trouble. May your practice always be smooth. Uh, and soon uh, may all of you uh, be able to experience the unconditioned peace of Nibbana uh, through your practice. <clears throat>